Next, we are going to the next presenter. The next pre presenter is um, Dr. Andeko, but uh, we will see his video, presenting video, because uh, he cannot attend, it, attend uh, the conference right now. Maybe uh, the video about, uh, presented by Dr. Andeko. But first, I will introduce him. Dr. Andy Koch is a biodiversity researcher engaged in the diversity, discovery, and distribution of amphibians and reptiles of the Indo-Australian with special focus in, on the monitor research of the entire region and the herpetofauna of Sulawesi. Also, global species diversity and exploration belongs to his research interests. In a broader sense, he is working on the history of natural history and natural history collection, particularly in the relation to the colonial era of Southeast Asia. Dr. Aneko is a member of Alexander Kunik Gesell Saf. Aikigi, Dirceo Gesasa for Herpetology and Terra Rinkunde, Deigi HT, Dirceo Museum Museum Bensberg, and Gesasa for Biology Systematics, International Society for the History and Bibliography of Herpetology, Zoologicus. Kesesaf for atan un population population suits set G A P. Maybe uh the the next uh video maybe somebody happy <laughs> to present his video. Selamat pagi and welcome to my talk. First of all, I'd like to thank um, Adel Papu very much uh, for the invitation and to give me the chance to present some of my research at this nice conference. So the topic is about some lizards and uh, I've done my PhD about the amphibians and reptiles of Zoolavesi. This is a book which was published in 2012. And today I'd like to um, show you the results of a recent publication which is about a taxonomic revision of the Zulavesi self in lizards of the genus Hydrosaurus. And we call it Dragons in Neglect because you have seen these lizards, they really look like dragons. First of all, I'd like to give you a short introduction to these uh, lizards. And the Latin name Hydrosaurus means water lizard. And this is um, very characteristic for these uh, huge Agamid lizards um, because they are often found close to water. Um, Selfin lizards, as the English name already says, are also characterized by some selfin like uh, structures at their back and at the tail uh, base. Um, and also, they have enlarged um, scales under the feet, which enabled at least uh, juveniles to walk over water. In this uh, phylogeny from 2012, we see that um, selfin lizards and hydrosaurus uh, form a separate subfamily, the hydrosaurine, and are rather basic within all agamid lizards. By the way, they are the largest liz uh, agamid lizards, reaching a total length of about one meter. <clears throat> um, Previous, previous to our investigation, there have been three different sailfin lizards in the genus Hydrosaurus. First, um, Hydrosaurus amboinensis from Pulau Ambon and uh, Seram, Sulawesi and New Guinea. Then, um, Hydrosaurus postulatus from the Philippines. And finally, Hydrosaurus weberi, um, described in 1911 from Halmahera and also occurs on adjacent islands in the northern Moluccas. So um, since more than 100 years, no investigation has taken place. And um, 
so um, yeah, there was just one recent phylogeny which investigated the phylogenetic relationship between um, the various um, populations. And as you can see here in yellow, Dulavisi represents a distinct clade, which is obviously distinct from Amboinensis and all other um, clades. So um, obviously it needs um, <clears throat> a species name. Here again, in these um, split networks, you can see that um, the Zulavisi population is closely related to Ambon, but also to Viberi from the Moluccas, and shows some um, high degree of intraspecific variation, probably due to the structure of Zulavisi and its tectonical history. This is a very nice picture of a male, um, Hydrosaurus amboinensis, from the type locality from where this species was described nearly 250 years ago. And <clears throat> here you see some characteristics, which is this blue um, frame around the eye. And also there is no crest on the nose. You can will see that this can be different. And um, the description by Schlosser in 1768 was um, accompanied by this uh, illustration. And um, it's obvious that the color pattern uh, fits very well. The problem is just that the specimen became darker and darker, so the, the real color pattern faded. And today the specimen, um, which is now kept at the Natural History Museum in Stockholm in, in Sweden, is nearly totally dark brown and shows not, none of the nice color pattern. But what you can see are little and, and large scales on the back, but they are just single, and this is also important to keep in mind. When we now look at the tailfin lizards of Zulavisi, there are two different phenotypes, um, so two different looking um, kind of uh, lizards. Uh, the first one here again a male because the male show um, the characters um, best is one phenotype where we have enlarged scales but fields of enlarged scales at the lateral side and here in this case they are even dark on the rather bright background color and um, yeah the eye is not blue it's difficult to see here and there, but there is a nice crest on the nose, which was not present in the population from Anbon. I showed you before. On Zulavisi, we find also another kind of the tailfin lizards. This is phenoty phenotype two. And in these um, lizards, in these specimens, the large scales on the lateral side are not as numerous and they are not dark colored but very light also on a rather light in this case orange yellow background color <clears throat> the eye is um, the whole eye in this case is light blue and we also find um, a nasal crest so when we compare compare the lateral pattern and the scalation of um, Amboinensis, here on the left side a female, um, the male on the on the right side, and we have the males of the phenotypes from the Lavesi. It's obvious that these are definitely not the same, but actually there are three different kinds of sailfin lizards. So we try to find out which name is available for the Zulavesi population. And uh, within the last 200 or 50 years, um, there were several uh, names um, described in the literature. La Zeta Giavanica was uh, the oldest one, but as the name uh, says, it's um, typical or was rather erroneously described from Java. So we could rule out this. The next one was La Zeta Lufura, but also this does not apply to the Zolavesi specimens. And this is also the case for Lufura Shovi. So the only names that um, are available are Istiurus Microlophus, described by Peter Bleker in 1860. He was a famous ichthyologist um, publishing 
many many papers about the fish uh, ikan ikan um, that are in Indonesia and the second name is Lufura celebensis uh, described by Wilhelm Peters 12 years later so this is the type specimen a juvenile of Hydrosaurus microlophus by Bleker and um, although juveniles do not show the characters of the male of the adult specimens that clear we can nevertheless see enlarged fields of um, scales on the lateral sides as has been the case in phenotype 1. <clears throat> um, yeah, here is a live a specimen of a, a picture of a live specimen which shows the same characters and yeah this is um these are the male uh, the adult specimens in f uh, male and the female um where you can see that also there is a sexual dimorphism between these lizards that the females are have a rather dark background color and the enlarged scales are bright whereas in males the background color is a light one here yellow and the enlarged scales are dark which is also um, true for the head Uh, in Hydrosaurus celebensis, the type specimen is uh, present in, in the Berlin Museum in Germany. And uh, this is an adult male, which clearly shows the uh, features which have already been observed in live specimen in phenotype 2, as you can see in this very nice specimen from Palopo. This here is a female. Um, it has also just a few enlarged um, scales on the lateral sides here also on the neck the background color is a bit darker and there the nasal crest and also the crest along the back and on the base tail is not as strongly expressed as in the male um, probably this is a juvenile which um, looks very similar to um, the one of Microlophus but as I said, um, the defining characters or diagnostic characters become just clear when they are adult. So from the available specimens, um, we created this map. And there are not many Barcher specimens in uh, zoological uh, collections and natural history museums, probably also due to the size of these lizards. <clears throat> um, so uh, nevertheless, it became obvious that um, Microlophus, uh, which was described from the area um, around Makassar, uh, just inhabits the uh, southeastern peninsula, whereas um, Tilibensis is mainly found in the central parts of Zulavesi, was described from um, the Pozo area here. And um, there's also, there are also some records from the southeastern peninsula, which indicates that both species occur or phenotypes occur together. So um, there exists also uh, the picture of this specimen. And um, here we are not uh, sure because it has several enlarged scales, a dark head, and um, so this might be a hybrid uh, between the <clears throat> both phenotypes so between hydrosaurus um, microlophus and celebensis so this is not quite clear um, what uh, is the if this is the case and some in-depth um, phylogenetic studies or um, yeah, molecular studies would give perhaps more results in this case but so far only um, we, we did only morpho morphological investigation. So nevertheless, we can conclude that it was justified to redirect um, the names Celebensis and Microlophus from synonymy of Amboinensis be because um, the cellphane lizards from Ambon are totally look totally different and are clearly distinct from the Sulawesi ones. So Amboinensis should be restricted to the central Moluccas and New Guinea. And on the other side, Dolavesi um, is the only known island to be inhabited by two different species of sailfin lizards, which is very unusual and unique and um, something special. 
So our investigations bring the number of recognized hydrothyroid species to uh, five, um, which is a nice result in this yeah, group of, this small group of amazing uh, dragon-like lizards. Um, but there are still mm, some open questions, not just in relation to the hybrids on Zulavisi itself, but for instance, here is a picture of a specimen which we found on the Talaud Islands in the very north of Sulawesi, between, uh, which is located between um, the Philippines, the Minahasa, and Halmahera and the Moluccas. So um, it's not clear to which um, species this island population belongs. Um, it has definitely just a few um, in large scale, so it looks much more similar to Telebensis. But when we the adults, and here is a picture um, of some of a, of a dead specimen. Um, there are obviously some some differences, so it's not clear to which uh, species the Talaud population belongs. <clears throat> so um, yeah, I hope I could show you or introduce you to these very nice, amazing specimens here. This is a Hydrosaurus weberi from Hamahera, also with very blue eyes, but um, nearly no enlarged um, scales on the lateral side, so also clearly distinct from the um, Zulavisi uh, specimens. And um, yeah, in the name of my co-authors, we would like to thank uh, the museum curators, which allowed us to um, investigate specimens under the care, and David Nolz, Eddie Even, uh, Nathanael Mouri, and Yassid, as well as Dieter Trobisch, um, they provided um, some of these amazing pictures, um, which yeah, I showed you today. So I hope you enjoyed very much uh, my presentation, and um, thank you very much. Terima Makasi. Okay, because uh, this is the last. Uh speaker but the speaker could attend the Sumo session. I will like to present him the certificate from for Dr. Andeko as a plenary speaker. Okay, thank you. I think it is the end of the second plan plenary session about uh, three, three wonderful speaker today. Uh, after this, I will like to call Megumi as MC to okay to hold the the next session. Thank you very much. Okay, well, thank you very much, Dr. Marisa Tapilo, Bachelor of Science, Master of Engineering, and all of the speakers on the second session for the presentation. It's such a good explanation that you've given to us. And ladies and gentlemen, finally, we come to the end of this plenary session. I would like to thank the speakers for their informative and interesting presentation, and also all the participants for their very active participation. Finally, giving applause to the speakers and all of you. So I am Megumi Nayon, say thank you so much for your attention in this session. Now I will hand it over to our committee to proceed to the next agenda. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Megumi. So I think we have to say sorry for the time delay and thank you very much for your cooperation. Uh, well, for your information, after lunch break, maybe about 15 minutes, we have to go to the parallel session and it will begin at 1 p.m. Uh, Central Indonesia time, jam 1 waktu Indonesia bagian tengah. And all participants are invited to join the same uh, Zoom link and will be directed to join each breakout room according to the schedule that has been shared. Thanks again and have a great lunch.